Yo, yo, like you could taste it, bro. You could taste the air, bro. It's disgusting, bro. See, I, still, I like it's it's definitely like hazy here, but I don't think you can smell it here. Oh, no, yesterday I smelled it. It was really bad yesterday during the afternoon, and I had to shoot out real quick for my job to, you know, go to the pharmacy or whatever. And man, yo, it was really bad. Like, you, know, you could your eyes were burning and all that. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, well, thank you. Thank you, Canada. Thank you. Yeah, thank thank you for nothing again. <laughs> Stupid Canadian. <laughs> oh my god. Uh but let's let's get the show on the road because we got we got a long, long way, man. Um yeah, man. Welcome to CBSI's Friday FOC with East Beast West, man. Um I am a guy Joker, and I am here with this guy, my man Josh. The hero that you don't deserve, guys. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, don't uh yeah. We got we got a roll on this one because you know, as much as I'd like to talk about a lot of news and stuff, and maybe we can at the end, I don't know. Depending on how fast 50, we get through. Yeah, there's 51 or 52 slides. So <clears throat> a lot of books, uh, yeah, a lot yeah. of DC, kind of one thing, sort of. Uh, so this is for Final Order Cutoff for Sunday, uh, <clears throat> June 11th for DC, and all independence ordered through Lunar, and Monday the 12th for Marvel and independence ordered through uh, Diamond. And make sure you go over to comicbookinvest.com, CBSI, check out all the articles, links to videos posted over there. And uh, let, let's just start right off right off the bat here. Here let's we go. Going. So Spawn, 343. So Spawn back to three covers, it seems. Too bad they didn't do the correct thing and go to back to a black and white cover, which is what I think everyone wants. And they go to a stupid virgin cover, which I'm sorry, people don't want. And I will speak for the masses. Nobody wants it. Yeah, this is really kind of like, usually, I don't know, like B covers not, I mean, more often, like the A covers are more better than the B covers. But right here, man, the B cover, I'm really be- digging it more than the A cover. Um, mm-hmm. So, cool. But Virgin not needed. Not needed. Definitely. And not. World Tree number one, third print. Already. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess I don't really hear anyone talking about this book. I mean, I've read it and I know like one other person that's read it. I'm not saying one other person in the world. I mean, I personally know one other person that's read it. Is, but is it is it like a big deal? This book, like, what? It's not okay. really, right? Yeah, yeah it's it's okay. We have to, it, I've discussed it on the last couple of yeah. episodes. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying is the third printing is like okay. Did we miss something? Is it, is it like like another word? Uh, what is it? Uh, Department of Truth or something? I don't know. It's too early to tell. No, it's yeah. not. It's not Department of Truth. It's, okay. it, it's weird. Um, I just wish they did a different cover, you know. Mm-hmm. It's they're just changing the colors. They're like lightening it every time, you know. Oh, thumbs down, thumbs down on the cover. Wow, I forgot all about this book. Okay, right. This kind of book is just kind of fading into yeah. nothing. You Boy. know how hot this was, and now I'm still reading it though. Yeah, I mean, I am too. I mean, it's not bad. It's just yeah. I think it's. Not as good as it started. How no, about it's just yeah. slowed down, you know? Yeah. Um, covers are pretty cool. Um, they're all right. I like that the FOC reveal. That's pretty different. Yeah. I just, I'm tired of Boom doing FOC reveals, unlockable variants, and then ratios. And, you know, do we, I, I'm, I'm at the point now where I'm getting sick of incentive ratios. I Bal- really am. Baldemar Rivas. Yeah. Okay. Interesting name. Kazi Zoo. Oh, look at that. Oh, Omnibus. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, great Omnibus. Yeah, well, well, what we got in here? Because isn't it Batman Adventures not at... I don't know. It doesn't seem like it's big enough to be an Omnibus. But let's see what's in here. What, what it's, it, oh, it's great Omnibus. First of all, it's $150. So it's you Oof. know it's huge. Okay, yeah. Um, so what you've got is... Um, the entire uh, first uh, series, uh, which is one through thirty-six, then you have Batman Adventures Annual one through two, the Batman Adventures Holiday Special number one, uh, a story from Batman Black and White number one. I don't know what that is. The Batman Adventures Mad Love number one, and mm. for the first time ever, the never before reprinted comic book a- adaptation of the animated feature film Batman Mask of the Phantasm. Wow, pretty dope. Um- yeah. This is something that's. Uh, I mean, if I had the money, I I, mean, I would. I mean, I got. I, I wouldn't spend spend my last like my, my last dollars on it. But this is definitely a Batman um, collector's um, 
should be in their collection. If you could get it for seventy five dollars, would you get it? Yeah, if I could get it for seventy five, I yeah, I definitely think about getting it. Um, but my question to you is that would you prefer this cover or um issue number twelve? Yeah, I was thinking about that. You know, look. <sighs> I don't think you put issue 12 on. I, I, no. Because, no, because Batman's not even on that cover, remember? You All right, how about, how about this? How about like how they do the Marvel? Do a variant or not a variant? No, I like how it's the original. I mean, issue one is, I, trust me, I went back and forth on this. I, I'm like, you know, issue one, not the greatest cover, but it is the, number one. There are better covers for sure that they could have done and not issue 12. Yeah, but I'm okay. I, I've decided on it. I'm okay. I, I wouldn't want issue twelve. Who could um, and, and DC, if the if the cover looks like this and not like a DC Omnibus original thing, uh, kudos, man. That's what's up, man. Yeah, yeah, stepping up your games with your Omnibus. So. Well, well, here's the other thing too is, and DC is notorious for doing this. They change what the cover <laughs> looks like when you get it. There we go. I mean, they'll put some like stupid square around it or yeah. something. They always do something to fuck it up. Uh, yo, what, what's uh, when, what's the release date of that? Um, it gotta be sometime maybe September like September fifth. Oh, September. Okay, yeah, I was we're not that September. far away. All right. Usually, omnibuses are are bit out. You know, like six right. months out at least. Well, there you go, guys. Uh, Batman: The Adventures Continues, season three, number seven. This this one's going uh, eight issues, I believe. Okay. Um, I don't think any of the others went eight, or maybe the first one went eight, and the second one went six, or something like this. But the the Court of Owls coming back, uh, in this, which is cool because the Court of Owls was in season two, and they just like abruptly ended, like with with Dead Man. It was just like out of nowhere, just ended. Okay. But so, why are you gonna, why are you gonna bring them back like the last two issues or something? You know. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm gonna get it because I love the adventures. Uh, series so uh, this is by far the weakest of the seasons like by I was a about to say that yeah yeah, yeah. so right. Batman the Golden Age on the bus volume 10 the last of the Golden Age Batman on the buses uh, we told the story before uh, they got so impatient that they came out with the Silver Age on the bus first before they released uh, volume 10 of the Golden Age so finally getting the very last of the Golden Age Batman on the buses, and we're already one volume into the Silver Age. So getting into uh, when Batman starts to get good, you know? Yeah. Uh, um, I, I want Still, still I know. not yet. I mean, you're still going to be in the early 60s, but, you know, getting towards the uh, late 60s, early 70s when it really starts getting good. How much is this one right here? Uh, this one is probably a buck, a hundred. Oh, no, that's not bad. Yeah, but it's it's only it's only uh, Batman eighty six through one hundred and Detective two eleven through two thirty two. No world's finest than this. Mm. Real quick, I want to show since we talk about um, I know I'm taking up time, but since we talk about Omni Boost, uh, this right here, you know, this is pretty cool too. This is a Silver Age Batman. This is a volume one of Silver Age Batman, uh, but this is a showcase one. The only thing is, it's black and white. This That's kind of cool, thing. though. Yeah, it is cool, you know. Uh, but for some people, you know, who like the cover and stuff, uh, so far I got volume one and two. For the Silver Age, um, but yeah, man, y'all have other options like this. This right here, I forgot how much it is like 20 something dollars or 30 something dollars. So, if you can't afford a hundred dollar army boost, you could get those showcases, you know. All right, okay, my bad. What we got? Oh, yeah, no, man, get the that's the Silver Age on the bus. Silver Age on the bus. I highlight you. Ah, okay, so they're gonna it's gonna look like that then. Okay. Yeah, All right. yeah, most likely. All right. well, no, 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 it won't look like that. The golden age. Here, hang on. You have a golden age one? Yeah. Yeah, I want to see how it is because. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. All right. Golden age. This is the last one, number nine. So they actually kind of keep it like, you know, the silver age one has kind of like a silvery blue color. The golden age is kind of like a lighter yellow. Yeah. Okay. So they, they do kind of keep it. Yeah. Um, oh, there you go, guys. Uh, hopefully, they keep it the same and they don't change it. I hate when they kind of change the omnibuses, like how Marvel did, where they turn the. Uh, but but I can't be mad if it looks just like this. But it won't. It won't. 
it won't. But it, if it looks just like this, I can't be mad at it. Either. Yeah, yeah. As long as they keep, I mean, the side, you know, oh, the, the side, binding, yeah, the yeah. binding the same. The binding needs to be the same. Speaking yeah. of omnibuses, the Spider Man 2999 uh, omnibus came in this week. I, I don't know if you saw the picture I posted on Instagram. Yeah, that's what... Dude, that thing is fucking huge. Wow. It's like almost the size of the fucking Jack Kirby omnibus, which is like the biggest omnibus ever. The the fourth world omnibus. Well, that was like 100 and change? Uh, 150. Oof. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see what we got. Batman Under the Red Hood Deluxe Edition hardcover. Um, if you've never read Under the Red Hood, Pretty good. I would say probably my favorite Batman story in Batman proper. Mm, okay. Yeah, definitely a good one to have. Even you know, even the animation movie that they made of this was pretty damn good. You know, um, but then again, DC is known to have like good animation movies. You know, uh, but yeah, yeah, definitely a good story. I agree with Josh, man. This is one uh, to get. Yeah, this is Batman six thirty five through six forty one. Batman six uh, forty five through six fifty. Batman Annual twenty five. Uh, Red Hood: The Lost Days one through six, and pages from Batman uh, six seventeen and six eighteen. Um, along with the introduction by Judd Winnick and never seen uh, before behind the scenes materials, uh, I don't. I I still don't understand why they put in that that shit from Batman the the Hush Run the six seventeen and six eighteen. I know it's like it, it technically happens before the Red Hood story, but that's mm-hmm. all just like a kind of like a um, not a dream. I can't remember. Does he get poisoned by Scare- Scarecrow at that point? Batman, and that's when he sees. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't remember. Is this Scarecrow or Poison Ivy? Remember somebody? I can't. Yeah. I honestly can't remember. Yeah. Uh, Batman: The White Knight presents Generation Joker number three, uh, issue two, is still not out yet. Prequel one and twenty five though. Does it seem? Does it seem like it's kind of like they kind of like? I don't know, like like taking up a break, and like usually they come more consistent with their releases. Well, they, or no, no, it's usually just that when it's usually when it releases. Or uh, it's it's on FOC the same week. You okay. know what I mean? It, yeah, that's yeah. usually what happens. And uh, issue, or I'm sorry, cover A, uh, kind of an homage going all the way back to the first Batman White Knight um, with uh, the two Harleys on the cover. Neo um, Joker. Yep. Um. Yeah, dope covers, man. Pretty cool. Okay, so now this is where we're going to be in for a long haul here. So... DC doing this whole night terrors thing that hits literally every single comic book possible. Really? Oh yeah. So night terrors is Joshua Williamson. So who is insomnia? Hello ghouls and ghosts. This is Boston brand, AKA dead man. And I'll be your supernatural tour guide across the night terror stories. After that fancy special oversized issue, you have to read first. The whole world is trapped inside their nightmares and Batman and I are trying to figure out who insomnia really is and why he wants revenge on the heroes of the DC universe. So who knows where insomnia's first appearance is technically, technically going to be. I don't know if it's going to be this book or one of the 800 other ones that you're about to witness. (laughs) Okay. 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 So this is just Night Terrors. This is a four-part series. This Night Terrors series. Okay. I like I like the Matina cover. This is nice. Yeah, it's pretty cool with mm-hmm. Dead Man. Mm-hmm. Um, this is kind of weird how it's like Dead Man and Batman together. It almost looks like you know Deadpool. I mean, not for, Deadpool, Daredevil. For yeah, Daredevil does yeah. at the same time. Quick glance gave me like an Azrael. Yeah. Yeah. We got it. And then listen to, listen to this. Love this cover. Okay. Yeah. World's finest homage. Yeah, yeah, okay. I wish they would go back to making covers like this. I really do. You know? He looks more like their double. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that. Doesn't he? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Night Terrors, Batman, number one. Hmm. This is also Joshua Williamson. Batman trapped in the nightmare realm. Ever since becoming Batman, Bruce Wayne has been a creature of the night. He transformed himself into a symbol that gave the criminals of Gotham nightmares. But now trapped in the nightmare realm, Bruce is stalked by the horror he's created. Can he escape before his own nightmares pull him deeper into the darkness? Did you read Batman this week? Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, all right. I, I read Batman, and I, I, feel, I feel like um, it's not – it's you know, after ending him being back in the in the real world, in the real universe, right, 
like it's lost, you know, and, and it's like where you go, where you go from here type shit, you know what yep. I mean? And, uh, it was okay. It was an okay read. It wasn't bad. I read worse, you know. Um, but like I said, it did, just didn't grasp me. And for being, it didn't seem like a Sadarsky book. How about that? Well, I would I would argue it does seem like a, a Batman <laughs> book because I don't like his entire run. I I just don't. It I don't understand. I've never been so bored with Batman. Mm. And I don't like the art either. <clears throat> yeah, the art I I don't really like. Bring Jimenez back. I, I where did he go? Don't Probably know. read it and was like, "No, nah, I'm not part of this." Oh, I like that damn world cover. Like yeah. an omen, like an omen. The kid, <laughs> theme yeah. Here. All right, <sighs> what else? Night Terrors, Black Adam, number one. Mm. Damn. Do you want me to read all these? I mean, or, you don't have to if you don't want to. But I mean, I can. I mean, get get the idea that each one of these people is going to have a nightmare. Okay. Or a night terror. Okay. All right. This is pretty cool. This Tiago del da Silva. This looks like it should be a statue. You know? I like. I really like. Although, yeah, I agree with you. All these covers are nice. I really like them. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Nice and Mars Neil Adams. Okay, yeah. with Superman. Yeah. Pretty cool. Night Terror's First Blood, number one. I re- will read this one because uh, this is also Joshua Williamson. Uh, Night Terror starts here. When Batman, Superman. So this is the one shot. So I guess this is where it starts. Okay. Um, Night Terror starts here when Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman find the body of one of their earliest enemies inside the Hall of Justice. Their investigation takes them past the land of the living, beyond the land of the dead, and directly to a new villain called Insomnia, who uses his powers to engulf every single hero and villain in their own dark and twisted nightmares. The only way to save the world uh, is to call for help of an unlikely hero, Dead Man. The thrills and chills of night terrors are brought to the DC universe by DC architect and superstar writer Joshua Williamson with horrific art by comics legend Howard Porter. I- I'm going, well, we'll get uh, to this at the end, actually. Howard Porter and um, I think uh, Williamson, um, they, they worked together before. They did The Flash. Um, well, I was going to say, um, real quick, did you read um, that uh, the Steel book? The mini- no. No, you Steel- haven't? Steel works? What is it, though? The oh, book Dark Knights of Steel? Yeah. This Dark Knight Steel, yeah, I read it. The one that dropped this week, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, yo, what what you thought of it? It was fucking awesome. Yeah, it was a good read. Yeah, very good read. Um, just, yeah, just, I don't know if it was up on FOC. The next, I, I'm gonna make the statement that I think Dark Knights of Steel is the best thing that Tom Haler has ever done. Yeah, eh, really? I've read, yeah, I that, have, I've, well, that I've read. I, yeah, you know what? Just the, the take of a different, you know, like like. Kind of like how um what is it uh Sean Murphy takes his yeah, own universe yeah, yeah it's kind of like that I, I do like that I do enjoy the characters um in this in this universe pretty cool pretty cool concept yeah, um yeah. pretty dope should definitely get get a chance to read it you know okay man I, I like the Matina cover yeah the Matina cover is nice Jay Lee I mean if you can't spot a Jay Lee cover a mile away he looks like the same thing almost every time um Edge of Curry awesome. I wonder if BLC's got a new thing here. You know, there's going to be a lot of Night Terror books, you know? Yeah. Kind of deceased, reminiscent of deceased a little bit. Night Terror's Flash, number one. Um, Who's writing Flash? Uh, Al- oh, so I might read this one because this is Alec uh, uh, Packnadal, the guy that's doing uh, Red Goblin and, and uh, Carnage. Yo, Red Goblin, uh, yeah, I read Red Goblin this week. Did I read it this week? It was, yeah, it was okay. Yeah, it was okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah but, this but, was but, pretty but, cool. but Carnage, the last issue of Carnage and Miles were pretty good. I started, no, I didn't read Miles. I didn't read Miles. Yeah, they all, um, they're all part of the Carnage Reigns thing. This one, this one about pretty interesting, man, to read, um, the Flash book, man, you know, and I do enjoy the read, um, the Red Goblin, so this one might, yeah, I might read it. Uh, ooh. are these one shots? No, they're no. one of two. There's two, all two issues, gotcha. except for the first one. That's four issues, and then the one shot. Yeah, all right. All right. Nightmare's Green Lantern. 
Uh, this is Jeremy Adams and Alex Segura. Tom Segura. Um, yeah, that that, that A cover is pretty nice, man. Um, should have dope that Pirillo. Mm. Um, we'll keep on next one, next slide. Hey, these incentives is not. They don't do nothing for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Night Terror's Joker number one. Interesting. Yeah, this is uh, Matthew Rosenberg. No. All right. Kinda eh. like Matina. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These covers are not wowing me, man. Then you obviously got a, a really bad Jack homage. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah, I see that. Night Terror's Poison Ivy. And this is G. Willow Wilson, who's doing the Poison Ivy uh, series right now. Yeah. Crazy one to 25. All right. Night Terror's Ravager. Really? Wow. Yeah. Like, why? Even though the Matina cover is pretty dope. I see that Dustin Gwynn is doing a lot of those black and red covers. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, They're called. uh, This is Ed Brisson doing this one. Uh, the black and red covers are called Midnight, uh, yeah, Midnight. Okay. Midnight cardstock variant. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Those are sentences. Those are those are okay. Night Terrors Robin number one. <laughs> this is uh, Kenny Porter doing this series. Now, which Robin is this? Damien? No, it's uh, Tim? it's I think it's Tim and Jason. Okay. Uh, and I think there's a new Robins series coming out. I think that's both of them. Okay. Night Terror's Robin still. Night Terror Shazam. Okay. Uh, this is Mark Wade. Okay, Mark Wade. This one might be all right. All right. That Jerry Orway. Yeah. Next. Night Terror Zatanna. Ooh, who's this? Um, so this is uh, Dennis Culver, okay. and I think these covers are obviously except the Kendrick Lim. I think these are all weak ass covers. So disappointed, you yeah. know. I feel like Zatanna always has to have good covers. Yeah, the Lim cover is nice, really nice. I really like. Yeah, that. and Kendrick Lim. I don't know if this is new, but now he's going by a nickname. Which is which I never heard him called this before, which is uh, Kunka or Kunka, K U N K K A. That's that's Kendrick Lamar. That's Kendrick Lamar. Like, I, I, that's cold, bro. I know that's Kendrick yeah, Lamar. I, I see. I see three K's in there, so I don't know. <laughs> oh wow! Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, dope cover though. Look like Montina. Yeah, that's a dope cover. Yeah, that ass. Yeah. Okay, so that's the end of Night Terrors. So when I was looking at this, I'm like, maybe I'll read them all. That way I get the whole story. And as I'm putting it, it took me forever to put those slides together because I have to download them all. Mm. And then when I'm going and changing all the pictures, I'm like, oh, no, that's the wrong one. Oh, no, that's the wrong one because I keep seeing night terror, night terror, night Mm. terror. Mm. Um, But maybe I'll read them all, you know, just to say that I read the whole series, you know. All right. I mean, we'll hopefully, good, yeah. I mean, Joshua Williamson is pretty good. So, so. No, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely, I, a minimum, are going to read the ones by him and then a the couple of ones. Yeah, I'll read the Flash one since it's uh, Pack Natal. Um, right. Zatanna, I'll probably read. Um, so you've got uh, World's Finest, which many argue right now is the best DC book going on, um, maybe other than White Knight. And the other thing is. Um, Right now, there's only six covers listed, but there are two others somewhere else that have no pictures. And I think one's a foil, so I think there are going to be more. So this is a uh, six-part series uh, spinning out of the pages of the runaway hit Batman Superman World's Finest. Comes a modern retelling of the early adventures of the original Teen Titans led by Robin the Boy Wonder. A new super team has burst onto the scene, Meet the Teen Titans. DC's grooviest group filled with super teens and uh, with super problems. When they're not fighting alongside their Justice League mentors, they're managing their image and cultivating their rabid fan base that helps them save the world. Uh, as all the while, a danger from the shadows intends to tear these friends apart before they ever reach the big time. Before they were Titans of the DCU, they were the Teen Titans. Uh, and you won't want to miss the fresh take on their origins from legendary talents of Mark Wade and Emanuela Lupacino. 
Oh, shit. Well, but you don't do the interior. Interesting. All right. Cool. All right. Those are the incentives. This kind of looks like my boy that I get, like, really good comic deals from. Obviously not fucking with the, you know, yeah. not, not Kid Flash or whatever the, this dude is. Um, ASM 26 uh, second print. Obviously, we knew this was coming. Um, both pleased and disappointed at the same time. Dope second print cover. You know, a cover that they did purely for this, not an interior. And then they go and ruin it. And I called this at the shop when, when the book came out. This is the spoiler variant. I'm like, I guarantee they're going to do the spoiler variant as a incentive Ratio. on the second print. And they did. Why couldn't you just do this as a second print and leave it? That would have been dope enough. Yeah. This is just stupid. I think if it was just the A cover, yeah, that, that would have been a good, uh, that, that, that would have been like at least a, like a $25 book right there. Yep. But- and now it won't be anything if it ever if it ever had a chance to be. But Spider Man second prints are not that common, believe it or not. Yeah. You know, just like Batman. Yep. Well, there you go, Marvel. Uh ASM twenty nine. Um got some more Disney one hundred covers coming. Um you're really getting into some good ones uh upcoming too. I know there's a Daisy Duck as Spider Gwen as the Edge of Spider Verse two, uh one and twenty five. Uh, that's coming up pretty soon. I know mm-hmm. that one. Um, pretty cool David Nakayama cover. Yeah. McGinnis cover is cool too. Yeah. Right, cool. Uh, Chichetto. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Nice covers for 29. All mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Yep. I dig it. Next, what we got? Edge of Spider Verse 2 second print. Uh, kind of surprised it's got a second print a little bit. Um, it, like I said, it was a good story. It was all about uh, Spinstress, um, the like the Disney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One. So, good book. Didn't think it would warrant a second print, but. Well, there you go, Marvel. Yeah. And this is uh, what's his name? Uh, Sky Spider or something like that. Well, that's him right in the cover. Yeah, Fallen Friend, the Death of Miss Marvel, number one, which Disney. is the biggest joke. This is like kind of like how they did Captain America, right? Or something like that. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's almost kind of almost like they just did with Scarlet Witch, also yeah. too. Um, yeah. this is G Willow Wilson, who does uh, Poison Ivy. I believe he did Catwoman for a while too, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. The heart of the Marvel universe has stopped beating. Really? We're gonna start with that statement. <laughs> That's a lie on on a couple different fronts. For some first people, all, I guess, bro. For some for people. First of all, we know that uh, she ain't dead. And second of all, she's the heart of the Marvel Universe. Really? You guys barely do anything with her because she doesn't sell. Anyway, the heart of the Marvel Universe has stopped beating. Kamala Khan died a hero's death in Amazing Spider-Man 26, saving our entire universe. Hmm. Come join the other heroes of the Marvel Universe, the creators of Ms. Marvel, and comic fans everywhere in honoring and remembering one of Marvel's brightest stars. <laughs> okay. That's that's that I'm definitely not reading this. I'm sorry. I'm gonna read it. I'm not. I'm good. I might. Okay. Hulk on the most volume two. Dope. Very dope. You getting this? You got volume one? Yes. Uh, um I'm just pissed that I have volume one. I don't have one of the original two printings. I have volume one when they redid it with the smaller printing on yeah. the, on the binding. Now, uh, what, are you going to go with the Trimpy or are you going to go with the Saranko? What do you think? You're going to go with the Trimpy. No. No, really? Wow. Okay. Now, I usually go with the direct market. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why. Yeah. Um, I do like... I. I, I it was kind of tough, but I mean, this is just such an iconic cover. It when is. it comes to omnibuses, I usually go with the direct market, and I try to stay away from variants, variant-looking covers. I understand this is not a variant cover, but I, it's kind of hard not to go with that one. Um, so this is uh, Hulk 103 through 134, and Annual One. So arguably, maybe uh, like the best Hulk. This is way better than Hulk uh, Volume One with the exception of the first six stories because the rest of it isn't even really his own books. It's, it's all the, 
What? This, this is this is better than um Hulk volume now. How about that? You know oh, I mean? well, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you want to read some Hulk stories, read this. <laughs> yeah, my God. Miles Morales, Spider-Man number eight. You got a lot of cool Spider-Man, Miles Morales covers coming up in the next few issues. These are um, yeah. And uh, so you got the return of the Hob. Miles battles the Hobgoblin. Okay. Um, so he is come. He's the Hobgoblin is back and more dangerous than ever. And he's got his glider aimed squarely at Miles. How could this get any worse for Spidey? Well, Hobgoblin might not be the only thing Miles needs to worry about. I'm not a fan of homage covers, um, but I do like them when they serve a purpose. You know what I mean? Like, this serves a purpose. Yeah. Miles is Spider Man meeting the Hobgoblin for the first time. Or I think it's the first time. So it, it fits, even though it's an homage. Every single one of these covers is dope. This is obviously an homage as well. Um, this was uh, issue. I want to say, was it 568? I don't remember. I want to say. But yeah, these covers are, these are covers are fucking fire. They are, really. That Jim Chung cover is really nice. Awesome, too. right? Um, I'm getting multiples of every single one. Yeah. Because Miles covers, again, not a big seller. It really isn't. But, you know, some of the books that hit, they hit for, uh, all right, let's take a two minute, like a two minute break, real quick. I want to know. I know you haven't seen the movie, right? The cross. Hang on. So this is it's five seventy. I think it's kind of an homage to that. Uh, yeah, kind of. Um, I know you haven't seen the cross the Spider Verse yet. Um, no. I don't know if you're planning on to, but fucking dope, dope, dope movie. I recommend it. I, I love it. It's a dope ass comic book movie. Um. That being said, I want to know what the market is right now for the first appearance of Miles. What is it doing? Um. Did it go to the shoe right back up? I don't know. I'm not in, you know, I'm not into that, you know, like I, I used to be. You know, I can look at right. I know I want to say I seen them nine eight selling around two thousand again. Okay. Um and so I know I know the one in twenty five still sells for like above thirty G's. Damn, okay. In right. a nine eight. So and how about the Gwen book? The Gwen go up because you know. No, that's fall. I know a nine eight Edge of Spider versus, like I've seen a bunch of them under a thousand or a, a, a thousand, and then the one in twenty five. I've seen lower than six thousand now. I've seen people trying to get like mid fives for it. Okay, all right. Just asking, man. You know, want to see if uh, these movies have any effect on the. Yeah, the I I don't know how much really. I really think the only thing that you're really going to see anything really, really, really drastic happen on is probably the two characters that you just mentioned, Miles and Spider-Gwen, when they hit live action. I don't think you'll see really any other books that, you know, maybe maybe Galactus or Surfer, or maybe Surfer. Surfer. I don't even know if Fantastic Four would do, really do it anymore. I mean, the things will always Dr. Go Doomwood. Out. Dr. Doomwood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, I just don't know if it's going to go, like, bonkers like it was, like everything was before. Miles, when they show Miles live action or say, or, or there is concrete evidence of it, it that will go, again, bananas. I, another one, too, is Spider-Man 29. I'm curious to see who was that going. And I see a lot of people posting them. There are a lot of cool Yeah, I see a lot of people posting. But that uh, that's just a... You know, a flash in the pan. Yeah, I mean, uh, too bad because I really like that. You know, Spidey Twenty Nine, dope character. All right, moving on. Red, Red Goblin. Goblin Six, Red Goblin Five was okay. Um, yeah, it was. It was. It's it was. crossing over with Carnage and Miles. The whole Carnage Reigns thing. Well, I think for Red Goblin, that was the issue with Carnage because I think at the end of the the book, they show you there's gonna hit up Miles, right? Uh, mm -hmm. what, what is it? Uh, Carnage Omega. And uh, and the Carnage book. So, um, but yeah, Red Goblin has been alright, man. It's been good. Uh, I I've been enjoying the read, man. Um, uh, I liked how his brother got possessed. The little kid got possessed by um Carnage. Almost killed the mom. Yeah, well, you didn't read the last issue issue of Carnage, where Carnage gets inside the uh the extremist or extremist armor that was infected with the the dragon symbiote from King in Black. And then he managed to get into, like, Stark's, like, servers and infect the internet. So he can literally infect people 
through electronics now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, uh, that's yeah. exactly yeah. how he possessed. Yeah, the, I, would, I was going to say Dylan. Um, Normie's, Normie's brother. Yeah, Stan. Stan the yeah. man. Yeah. Stan the man. <laughs> Don't cover the, the Baron. Spider-Man 7 third print. Okay. No ratio right now. Yeah, so. I'm okay with this. Yeah, it's a different. It's a different cover. It's and there's only like, one. Yeah. Yep. I'm right with this. Yeah, I'm. I'm surprised you didn't. Uh, you didn't get any second prints, did you? Nah, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. I, you listen, man. I haven't been been on top of my collecting anymore as much. Yeah. Been reading though. So, but yeah. Ultimate Spider-Man on the bus, Volume Three. Uh, they've released these within pretty quick succession. Uh, or re-released them, I should say. Are you on uh, this run? Am I getting it? Are you? Yeah, you're collecting this run. The ultimate yes. Run. Yeah. Okay. Not in omnibus form. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Um. So you got. They always do three uh, covers. Which one do you think I'm getting? All right. Um. Is that the a Bagley? The Bagley? They're all Bagley. I know. <laughs> uh. The the Moon Knight is pretty cool, but that red one, Carnage, is pretty badass too, man. I'm gonna go. Would you gonna get the Moon Knight one? No. You look like a Moon Knight motherfucker. Uh, well, are you going to get the Carnage? Yes. All right. I would have gotten this one, but this is a variant cover. Yeah. It's cool because this was issue 100, just like yeah. how it was. Oh for, yeah, but it was the variant for issue 100. This is, I want to say, like 103, and this is 104 or something yeah. like that. Or no, no. Or the, the last two. No, the right. Right. yeah. Yeah. Carnage one. Web of Carnage, number one. So, yet another Carnage. Dang, Kendra Lim, okay. Yeah, yeah, and we're back to Ram V. So, be careful. Carnage shall inherit the earth as Cletus Cassidy exacts his vengeance on an unsuspecting city, and Carnage reigns across the Marvel Universe. The Carnage symbiote remains left to its own devices, adrift among the stars. With its purpose renewed after the death of the Venomverse, Carnage has scant few hurdles between it and and a glorious ascension to the throne of the king in black. And the first is named Morlin. Yeah, didn't didn't Carnage, not Carnage, um, Venom have like Web of Venom not long ago or something like that? Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know. Are they recycling stories and just replacing the characters? Yeah. I don't, just, yeah. I, I don't know, man. But uh, these covers are pretty cool, man. I, you know, I, I'm a sucker for um, like symbiote covers and shit. They're pretty dope, man. I guess, but the Kendrick Lim ones, while he does really good work, they're really samey. You know, they 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 just always look the same. No, nonetheless, dope covers. What if Dark Loki number one? Um, so they're doing this. Or, well, not what if Dark Loki. What if Dark Loki number one? Uh, so this is uh, Walter Simonson returns to his illustrious run on Thor, but this time Loki's in charge. A tale of one of Asgard's worst days and one of Loki's best. Uh, I need this Delato. That Delato. I was about to say yeah. that. That's the book right there. I think yeah. something about this book, I don't know what, but keep an eye out because you got the Loki show coming out. You got so many different characters and these what ifs, man. You know, a lot of people got their eyes in the what ifs, man. Um, Certain books. You know? I will get this if any of my shops get, to fire. get it. I will. That is really nice. X-Men Days of Future Past Doomsday, number one. Okay. Now, let me read this first. So this is Mark Guggenheim. Uh, the cataclysm that leads to the X-Men's dystopic future. Return to the future in a tale that reveals the events leading up to the timeless or original Days of Future Past story that's inspired spinoffs, films, and more. In a world where mutants are more than simply hated and feared, but not yet slain and apprehended, the assassination of Senator Kelly comes to pass, bringing with it the Mutant Control Act and Sentinels on every corner. But with mutant kind on the back foot, what lengths will uh, Kate Pride, Wolverine, Colossus, Storm, Banshee, Angel, Cyclops, Professor X, and the rest of the X-Men go to in order to find some way to survive? And what scheme of Mag- uh, Magneto will bring about the ultimate doomsday? When is the 30-year descent into the dystopic future replete? With the previous untold deaths of key mutant characters as we flesh out one of the most celebrated X-Men timelines in its own series for the first time. You know, I may, I kind of want to read this, even though I've never read days of future past. I'm trying, I'm currently very slowly 
reading X-Men right now from GSX up. But honestly, I was trying I was thinking about this uh yesterday and today. Is there honestly a greater subtitle or if that's what you call it, I I, I don't know, or just title, not a subtitle to a comic series ever than Days of Future Past. You talk about just for the X-Men? No, I'm talking about for anything. Mm. Like, I'm talking about purely title. Just Days of Future Past is just, like, a dope title. It is It is a dope title. It is. Like, what's a doper title? I mean, I, I, off the head, I can't really think. Doomsday Alone. How about that? Doomsday. No. Why not? No. It's stupid. It's Doom, not creative. I, Days of Future Past. Eh. I, listen, man. I, I'm in the comments. This. Somebody put in there yeah. a greater subtitle to a comic series. Yeah, not just right. than anything. Last Halloween. The Long Halloween. You mean? Oh, long, I mean Long Halloween. Last that's, Halloween. That's a great. That is a long great Halloween. one. And that's the other one that it, I'm not even kidding you. That's the only other one that kind of came into my mind. But, yeah. I, but I still and I love the long Halloween. Yeah. Days of Future Path though is just I don't know. It like it's like transcendent. All right, before you go, I want to tell you. I feel like honestly speaking, yo, um, the X Men is due. I mean, I'm not a big X Men guy. I love Wolverine. Wolverine is pretty badass. That's the only like like me and I like. You know what I mean? Um, but I feel like X Men is due of like they 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 do for a good run, man. They need to have a good run or a good writer. I'm not saying this might be the book, whatever the case is. Uh, I'm just saying, uh, I think it's their time. I think it's time for you know them to step up and um, put some good writers behind uh, the X Men title. You know, um, yeah. That's what I, I wonder if they would ever put Claremont back on the book, and I wonder if people would even want him back on the book. Is they, the I mean, they, they he's been on the Gambit, right? He did the Gambit one. And that was terrible. Show, and it was bad. So, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, you know, honestly speaking, like, some people, like, you know, they, you know, they have their run, and then kind of catch that, you know, what is yeah, it, he was on. He was on it for, like, like, oh, what, like, time. For like 20 years or some shit like that. Excuse me, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the old man, the old one. All right, next. Oh, okay. That's Suyana's thanks. That one in fifty. I like the Saturday morning cartoon one. Yeah. yeah. Hey, look at that. We kind of made it. I mean, I told you we might get through the uh, the whatchamacallit pretty fast since you know we didn't read them all. The uh, the night terrors. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, Adventures of Superman, John Kent. I, I read first issue. I, I I thought it was good. I just never really. Let me know in the comments if you're reading this. How's it going so far? Uh, you got the black and white statues for some reason on. Um, pretty cool. I wish they were doing more. The Bat Monster one is cool. If you don't have it, I have that. One of my favorite ones. Not really a fan of these other Batman. You know. Um, oh, that they just added the this. Sense. They just added this one. Yeah, I, I don't like a lot of the Batman. The only one I like is obviously the McFarlane one. And the Capullo. And the Capullo one. Yeah. A and the Bat Monster one. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Um, all right, next. Batman Incorporated. I'll say it again. I really wish I kind of was reading this. Mm. This, I don't know. I like all the clowns. I do. Yeah, that clown. What that? What, what the fuck was it that that we showed before? Was it a clown hunter? Not clown hunter. It was a cover that we showed, and it was like a, just like a, a clown. Or, yeah. I don't know what it was. I forgot. I think it was last week or the week before. That was a dope cover. It was just a simple cover. Yeah. All right, next up, what we got? Uh, Batman movie, stupid statues. These are stupid. All right. We uh, we already did that. Uh, Black Adam, uh, stupid Charm statue. City. Charm City. All right, next. Nobody right. cares. Uh, this is a pretty cool uh Batgirl statue, Josh Middleton. 250. Um, and this is a Capullo. Uh, yeah. I still like the Batman black and white Capullo Joker better than that. Where his face, he's got the Joe's Garage fucking jumpsuit on. Yeah. 
I got the uh, ass to that. <coughs> DC Pride second printing. Oh yeah, it's the month. The month. Um, deceased mm -hmm. War of the Undead Gods hardcover. Okay. Yeah, deceased. this is the re. The, no, they just added this, so this would have been up there. Yeah, so the collect the run just ended or is about to end. Um, kind of disappointing that they didn't put a, a Harley statue up here that we'll get to in a minute with Joker. Um, I like we, that what the, this? Yeah, they're right there. Yeah, but the one you want is this one. They've been advertising this for a minute. That is sick. That, that, There's that, that, a that, Harley that, one that goes with it. That is sick. Yeah, I really want this. I thought about ordering it like a couple months ago. I may. I just don't really like that it says Joker. I, I love it. I love it. I love it. I, I need that. I need that. Yeah, the Harley one. You can get them together, too. Yeah, that is dope. That one's okay, too. Yeah. yeah I like that one, man. That was dope. Oh, that's sick, too, man. That Tony Daniel. Look at that. That is dope, man. Okay. Uh, these this is all the night terror shit. Yeah, we talked about all this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boop, boop, boop. What? Great, greatest adventure. Okay, pink elephant. All right. Robin. Like, I'm sorry if we skip through, like, a lot of this stuff on Lunar, but I'm sorry. A lot of this stuff just does not appeal to most people, you know? Steelworks I mean, issue one came out this week. I doubt anyone read that. You're in line. Um, Superman versus Meshi. Okay. Superman lost. Wildcats. I can't even believe this series. Uh, I can't. It, it, does anybody read this, honestly? I don't know, but that cover's dope, though. That other one. Yeah. This you one? That one? Yeah, that one's dope. Look at that shit. That shit is sick. All right, next. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's it. All right. Next up. What we got here? Go to previews. Uh, <clears throat> All right. Let's see. Try to skip through these two. Um, boom, boom. There, uh, it came off. There's another Noctera one shot coming out. It's like, guys, come on with the one shot. Yo, oh. dude, that's another book. I read Noctera this week. Yeah. I didn't yet. That's the only book I didn't read. That and Walking Dead. Like no. Yeah. Uh, as losing, I'm I'm just not feeling it, man. I really ever since they changed the main character to the brother, don't like it. They should have changed it to the girl. They should have. Yeah, that's where I thought they were going, but they didn't. Yeah. That's Marvel. Let's see. Daredevil and Echo number one second Did printing. You, you show those Avengers. Trip, oh no, those are pink trophy bags. Okay. Yeah. Groot, number three. Immortal X Men, number thirteen. Okay. Loki, number two. That fucking Loki cover was dope. That the latter one, man. Fire, fire. Um, those masterpiece, those um covers. All right, cool. Uh, what else? Bounty Hunter, Rogan Gambit, Stephanie Phillips, Scarlet Witch. Oh, Bounty Hunter's 36. This is a pretty dope cover right here. Oh, it is a dope cover, yeah. Right? Salvador La Roca. He does good Star Wars covers. A lot of, a lot of covers on issue 36 for some reason, but I don't think any incentives. Like an old school homage. That yeah. Cool. Uh, what we got? Darth Vader? Darth Vader. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Dr. Dr. Rafa. Very yeah. reminiscent of... Uh, the other, uh, the, her first uh, appearance, yeah, yeah. yeah. with triple zero and yeah, I guess yeah, storm. Those storm yeah, covers are looking nice. Se second printing. Oh, okay, still cover though. All right, Warlock Rebirth four or five. X Force. Anyone reading X Force? Stupid. Yeah. I'm not. Definitely not. I know you're not. Oh, uh, it's a facsimile. Uh, we'll These freaking with. Disney villain covers are so dope. That's like a J. Lee cover. Nope. It is a J. Lee cover. Oh, it is? Okay. There we go. That's fine. It looks yeah. like a J. Lee cover. 
I didn't see it. Um, I mean, they're like between Maleficent and Scar. I mean, yeah, it's just something it's about it. Really it just sucks that Dynamite prints their their Sh books on such shit paper. That and they make so many covers. Yeah, that too. Um, I know. Where was it? Um, I'll kill Bill Amash. Yeah. Uh, I know the turtles have that one shot in here. They put it back in. Uh, last uh, last Ronin Lost Day special. Mm. One shot. Okay. So you know they're doing the lost years. This is the lost day. Uh, ongoing IDW. I like their omnibuses. They're pretty cool looking. I have to yeah, say they do. Uh, yeah, I do. And too. then they're doing the best of Karai. Okay, I guess. Well, yeah, she's Shredder's daughter. Yeah, I'm. I'm just saying. I guess. I mean, she's popular. Not, I guess. Well, it is, I guess, bro. It makes more sense than like best of Rat King. Even though I love Rat King, you know, I, I mean, I do, but. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, that's it. All right. Man, that's that some cards. There you go. Right. Um, wasn't there something in here? I know Biggs is getting that. Mullet Superman. Superman is his favorite Superman, bro. Yeah, midget mullet Superman. <laughs> It's like me or Erod dressed up as freaking. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> uh, Super Seven doing Sesame Street, huh? Really? Okay. Yeah. Count Von Count. I give me a Grover. A Grover. How many it. times must I smack you? Um. Yo, I, I are you gonna go see Beast Wars? Yo, the trailers look dope, man. Yeah, I read the spoilers by accident, but. How um, a lot, a lot of rings saying, but you know what? I don't be going by that many moment. I gotta go see it myself, man. Rhinox, that shit is dope. Yeah, and then you've got I know the uh, uh, the Optimus Primal is like 130 bucks because really? it's like, yeah, damn, it's okay, it is okay, but 130 does not, nah, I'm good, I'll pass. I pass. I'm surprised, no, no, uh. No, uh, uh, what's her fucking name? Oh my god! Why can't oh, I really think of her Omega name? Fox? No, <laughs> from uh, 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 Beast Wars. Uh, why can't I fucking think of her goddamn name? It's all right. People in the comments already got it, man. So. They helped you out. Um, okay, Google it real quick. No, I, 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 it's, it's like right on the fucking tip of my freaking tongue. Air razor. No air razor. I'm surprised in this. Anyway, anyway, that's all we got for today's yeah, show. That's, that's, that's all minutes. Got. Yeah. Make sure you go over to comicbookinvest.com. Yep, you got it, Mike. There you go. There you go. Make sure you go there, guys. All right. Hey, well, we did good, man. Good on time. Yeah. All right. I remove that shit. All right. There we go, man. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, again, man, make sure you go to your comic shops. And place your orders in, man. You know, um, get your orders in um, on FOC. Again, guys, FOC purposes is just to let you know that time has run out, man, for you to order these books. You know, because if not, you're going to take your chances of missing out. Or catch them, you know, on New Comic Book Day when they release. So um, make sure you put your orders in on what you want. Um, and if we missed anything, guys, just let us know in the comments, you know. Um, again, we'll be back next week, guys. All right, man. Let me just find my video and end it right now. All right, later.